Can you see it? Oh, you can see, I can see. Uh, so uh, thank you so much. I'm just going to very quickly present the project that we've started in, in, in Turku and Helsinki this year. It's called Computational History and the Transformation of Public Discourse in Finland, 1642 to 1910. And basically we are four groups working on this. I'm from the Helsinki group. Um, and uh, we also, I mean, we have the, the, the machine learned, machine lear learning people involved both from Turku and, and then, then in the Helsinki group. And then we have the National Library who's developing especially the digitized newspaper collection that we have in Finland. Uh, I should say that they are, that the Finnish collection actually does include all the newspapers digitized from the 1770s until 1910 when copyright is in. So we have actually have everything, but there are obviously a lot of uh, OCR problems there and uh, a bit less than half of it is in Swedish. So most in the beginning it's only in Swedish, then Finnish kicks in and then by uh, 1890s Finnish material is is more, more prolific than, than Swedish one. But we have bo both languages and, and then there's also a, a lot of translation going on there. Uh, another other material that we're using uh, is library catalogues. So we have library catalogues from the Royal Library in Sweden and, and from the National Library in, in Helsinki. And I'm going to show you an image of that. Uh, because the, the first thing we're going to do with newspapers is that we're only going to look at the metadata from newspapers. That's practical because there are no copyright issues there, there, there's, there are no OCR issues there. And we also, with the metadata, we get a quite a quite large picture. And this is what we first did with the uh, library catalogues. Sorry, this is going quickly. So we tried to find research questions in which we could quantitatively sort of confirm something that historians have been thinking that this, this must be the case. And, and the first one is about uh, its book sizes. So we estimated by book size, because that's in the metadata, we could look at paper consumption in, in book production and uh, how different sizes books uh, emerged in, in Swedish, Swedish material. And the green line that goes up, you can see that's the octavo size book. And this is signif significant because that's a size book you can put in your pocket. So it's a, it's a revolution in reading habits right there in this one graph graph because that's when you would sort of walk with your book somewhere you could go read them it's not like something you have to have a big book and put it on table and read it out loud uh, the second graph this is I, I really really love this one because it's 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 so simple uh, 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 it's about the uh, years after freedom of print in Sweden 1766 so this is when then the the hypothesis is that this is an explosion in publishing but what we, what we did is that we we counted uh, how the the paper use per title changes in this time. So we could the hypothesis was that pamphlet pamphleteering would sort of explode right after freedom of print. A much more sort of a quicker quicker way of of, of debating emerged, and I think we could show it quite nicely with with these graphs. So the next move is then to to do this kind of stuff with the metadata with newspapers as well. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, contents because that's what I have been doing as a historian for 10 years now, reading these newspapers and, and studying the text. And, and the tradition I come from is basically what we call conceptual history or and, and actually we're very close to the text, very close to words and, and word, word use. So the kind of tools we get from corpus linguistics, if we can, if we can do things that uh, that Andrew ha Hardy was talking about earlier, then we are very happy. We can do a lot with that. But o obviously, our interest is much more in in maybe looking at the the political and rhetoric aspect of 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 using words in historical text. And I guess the main challenge is then to 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 sort of quantify and identify things when, uh, situations when, when words become contested, when they are sort of gain new meanings, when, they, when, when something happens, when words, using a particular word, become, word becomes exciting. And this is something that has been, do been done qualitatively a lot, say, ever since the 1960s. But what we are sort of pushing for is then to try to do this qualitative analysis, but also get the the quantitative 
figures to, to support that get the trends. The n-grams are obviously very important for us, but we can, I think, do so much more. Uh, the, the image I have there is just, I mean, one of the typical du things we would do is to sort of search for something like liberalist, but we would also search for qualifiers. So here's someone, here's a search on sun liberalism, the true liberalism, and that's always a sign that then somehow the concepts of liberalism is somehow contested because there can be true and false liberalism and, and so on. This is a way to find, find, find that kind of debate. Uh, I think I'm, I'm passing on to Risto because he will talk more about what he does on socialism and I hope this works as an introduction to him. Okay.